Hello my friends, today we are going to talk about the diverse and mysterious history of the peoples of Madagascar. Not only will this video feature their genetic heritage, but also we will discuss the controversial issue of when humans first came to Madagascar. First we will highlight the traditional academic view of the settlement of Madagascar, which generally assumes that humans arrived on the island relatively recently in terms of human migrations. And then second, we will highlight the results of much newer research, which shows that humans have been on Madagascar for far longer than what was previously thought. Alrighty, let's dive into this topic of Madagascar's unique population mix. My first source of information on all this was a book called Madagascar, Island of the Ancestors. Though since this book is from the 1980s, I also went on to gather information from other books I had, and also I checked more contemporary online sources as well. Now in this book, there's a map that shows a very broad range of possible areas where migrants could have come from. Specifically, the map shows areas of the world that use outrigger canoes for sea travel, which is the type of boat used in Madagascar. Circled in these dotted lines is Madagascar itself, with, of course, the East African coast in that same circle. Additionally, we can see parts of India and the island south of India highlighted. And finally, there's a circle around Indonesia, which extends off the map since peoples as far away as Polynesia also use outrigger canoes. The book and some other sources claim that Madagascar was first settled around 500 AD, about 1,500 years ago, but other sources claim it would have been found around 2,000 years ago. Now, as I said at the start of the video, new research has been done for an even earlier date but that will be revealed in a later section of this video. Anyway, before I share the main idea of the early migration story presented in the book, the author John Mark briefly mentions a couple of other ideas. He states, The game of guessing at the identity of these first settlers has proved endlessly fascinating. Some have suggested that amongst the candidates must be Southeast Asian mariners carried directly by the prevailing winds and currents across the vast expanse of the Indian Ocean, a distance of some 6,400 kilometers from Indonesia. A contiki style expedition sailing a suitable constructed outrigger canoe has even sought to test the possibility, taking 49 days to make the crossing. In the end, however, accidental discovery in this way cannot have been a method of significantly peopling the island. However plausible the journey in one direction may or may not be proved to be, not only would it be necessary to accept that such voyages were successfully repeated, but the fact that intervening islands, Reunion and Maroteus, were found to be unoccupied before Europeans arrived would need to be explained away. He concludes that this direct accidental discovery is not possible, but more contemporary sources seem to agree with this idea. So, it's very likely that this is exactly how it happened. Likely, some Indonesians were out at sea and accidentally landed on Madagascar. Pre.org explains that a genetic analysis suggests only 30 women comprised these early settlers of Madagascar. Here's a direct quote from molecular biologist Murray Cox. Such a small population suggests that they may have colonized Madagascar after crossing the ocean by accident. Further evidence to support this possibility comes from World War II. During the war, wreckage from ships bombed near Sumatra and Java later washed up in Madagascar. In addition to that, a survivor in a lifeboat washed ashore as well. Plus, according to the Royal Society Publishing.org, they state that this old theory of the unintended settlement has been revived based on seafaring simulations using ocean currents and monsoon weather patterns. As for how we can explain away Reunion Island and Maroteus being uninhabited, well, I don't have a source which refutes this, but I came up with my own logical explanation for how people could have found Madagascar, not the two tinier islands. 
Let's say you're going for a nature walk. In the area, there is exactly three animals. One is an ant. Let's name him Maroteus. The second animal is a bumblebee. Let's call her Reunion. Both are very small. You might not even see them on your nature walk. But you know what you do see? The fucking Tyrannosaurus Rex named Madagascar. Anyway, I don't want people to think this book is a useless book. I'm just saying the science is out of date, which is why I looked at other sources. On the other hand, there's plenty of great art and cultural information in this book, which is why I will be referencing this book in a future video. Now, let's check out the other theories of settlement. The book goes on to say the following. Still more improbable is a suggestion the pioneers were Buddhist monks. I believe that this theory is tied to something I read on fizz.org, which states, Another idea is that Madagascar was settled as a formal trading colony, or perhaps as an ad hoc center for refugees who had lost land and power during the expansion of the Srivijayan Empire. The Srivijayan Empire were Buddhist and based in modern-day Indonesia and much of the Malay archipelago from the 7th to 12th centuries. As for how probable this possibility is, well, that's hard to determine. Finally, let's read what the book and some other sources feel is the correct answer to the settlement of the island. Current debate envisages a wave of migrants passing around the northern fringes of the Indian Ocean, possibly taking in southern India itself, Sri Lanka, and the Maldives, before moving into its western extremities and touching on the East African coast during the early part of the first millennium AD. It was these migrants, ultimately of Southeast Asian origin, who were to occupy Madagascar in significant numbers and for whom this may have been their journey's end. What remains unclear is the character of their relationship to African populations. A number of possibilities have been canvassed. A period of settlement on the African mainland prior to arrival on the island is clearly quite likely. Similarly, it has been suggested that Madagascar may have been used as a base from which these migrating peoples explored the lands lying on the other side of the Mozambique Channel. The fact that large fleets of Betsimisaraka and Sakalava raiders ravaged wide areas of the East African coast and intervening islands to the northwest of Madagascar in the late 18th and early 19th centuries affirms at least the possibility of such exploitation of the mainland from which an acquaintance with African cultures might derive. Increasingly, the Comoros have been identified as an important stepping stone between continental Africa and its largest offshore island. So that's a solid theory, but from what I've read elsewhere, it seems like the science is leaning toward that accidental discovery idea. Regardless of which migration theory is correct, what is largely agreed on is that Indonesians came to Madagascar between 1,500 years and 2,000 years ago. Almost all Malagasy share African and Asian heritage. According to RoyalSocietyPublishing.org, the exact origins of these African settlers remains largely unknown. Contact with populations north of the Zambezi River is typically favored. Another very noteworthy thing is the language of Madagascar. There are technically multiple dialects on Madagascar, but they are all very, very similar, and the dialogue is heavily rooted in the Malayo-Polynesian structure of languages. But it also includes some African Bantu words. For example, words related to farm animals are clearly of Bantu origin. The book states that the fact that these Bantu words are a common feature across the whole island suggests the African influence has been there from the start of Madagascar's civilization. And the Royal Society Publishing.org is in agreement with this idea. Believe it or not, there's still more mystery afoot. Remember when I said the Malagasy language is rooted in the Malayo Polynesian structure? Well, specifically, it's closest to a language found on the island of Borneo in the Malay archipelago. So, why is this group of languages called Malayo Polynesian? Well, not only is this family of languages 
found on the Malay archipelago, but also it can be found in Oceania in general, even as far as Polynesia. So, does that particular info mean that the people of Madagascar are also Polynesian? No, it doesn't. But, could the people of Madagascar be related to Polynesians in some way? Maybe. I read a fuck ton of genetic data during my research, but I'm not totally sure what to make of it because I'm not a scientist, and the articles written about said scientific information are not clear enough in my opinion. So here's what I'm talking about. According to the U.S. National Library of Medicine, National Institute of Health, in this study, we assess mitochondrial DNA variation in 266 individuals from three Malagasy ethnic groups, the Makaya, Vezo, and Marina. Complete mitochondrial genome sequencing reveals a new variant of the Polynesian motif in Madagascar. Two coding region mutations define a Malagasy-specific subbranch. This newly defined Malagasy motif occurs at high frequency in all three ethnic groups. Before we continue the quotes, I just want to say that I think it's weird that they only studied DNA from three Malagasy groups. According to my book, there's at least 18 major ethnic groups on the island, so I feel like they should have had a larger sample size for this study. Anyway, back to the quote. The Polynesian motif, popularly named for its high frequency among Polynesians, is characterized by a well-known series of mitochondrial DNA. You know, originally when I was creating this video, I was thinking to quote much, much more of the scientific data here. But then I realized that not only would that make this video crazy long, but also a lot of people would probably fall asleep because it's just too much. So... Instead of that, trust me, I read the whole damn thing. Both of the articles I read. They are long as shit, and they are boring. So let me save you some time, and let's get straight to the point. Part of the reason I went down this rabbit hole to begin with is because I thought I heard something about Polynesia being connected to Madagascar before. Initially, what I found online was a news article by Wired.co.uk saying, Many of the Malagasy are of Polynesian descent. But I was not willing to take this claim at face value because, as many of my viewers know, I tend to be very careful about which sources I trust. Luckily, this news article mentioned a source, that being the Royal Society. So, I read both the Royal Society's science article and the one I just mentioned from the U.S. National Library of Medicine National Institute of Health. And after reading both, I feel like it's more complicated than that news article portrays it as. I wish these scientific articles were more clear and concise with their conclusions, but I'll try my best to tell you what I got out of it. To me, it sounds like the scientists are saying that there is an aspect of DNA found mostly in Polynesia that is also in the people of Madagascar. They call it the Polynesian motif. There is some slight difference, though, with the Y chromosome. And so they have dubbed this the Malagasy motif. This small difference is enough for them to say that despite the shared DNA, currently, based on the data they have, they believe it is unlikely that Polynesians travel directly to Madagascar. Additionally, they said this Polynesian motif is very rare in Indonesia, but it can still be found in a small few Indonesian people. Also, they go on to affirm the theory of Indonesian settlers to Madagascar. And so it sounds to me like what they're implying is that the Malagasy do have some distant Polynesian heritage in their DNA, but that it came from people who were culturally and geographically Indonesian. Hopefully I didn't misinterpret the scientific data. As many of my viewers know, I am a guy who likes to talk about art and culture. I am not Bill Nye the Science Warlock. So, I will provide links to these sources in the description so that you can read them and interpret them for yourselves. 
Anyway, let's now go back to the African side of Malagasy heritage. We will now discuss what I hinted at at the beginning of the video. I'm talking about the most recent research I could find about human activity in the island of Madagascar. There's an article from 2019 from Penn State University which confirmed that humans did not first arrive on Madagascar only 2,000 years ago, but instead, the first human to step foot on Madagascar did so 11,000 years ago. The team of researchers who conducted this study were led by Christina Douglas, assistant professor of anthropology in the College of Liberal Arts and a faculty member in the Institutes of Energy and the Environment. She and her team collected every radiocarbon date that has ever been generated for archaeological sites on the island. The results are the most comprehensive database of radiocarbon dates for Madagascar. Christina is quoted in the article saying, The African continent has some of the oldest human remains on record, some of which are millions of years old, yet previous research suggested that this huge island that is not that far off the coast of Africa doesn't get settled by people until about 2,000 years ago. So in other words, Africans arrived in Madagascar first 11,000 years ago. However, she also states that despite the reliability of this early arrival estimate, it is still unclear whether the evidence from 11,000 years ago is from permanent human settlements or if humans just visited the island temporarily. Alrighty, let's now zoom forward in time to wrap things up by mentioning the last two historical cultural groups to come to the island. In 1165 AD, Arab geographer Al-Idrisi makes the first written account of Madagascar, and around 1200 AD, the first mosques and Arab settlements on the island are built. Centuries later, the Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama sailed past Madagascar in 1497 on the first European voyage to India. But the first European to actually set foot on Madagascar was the Portuguese sea captain Diago Dias on August 10th, 1500 AD, after he was blown off course during a voyage to India. Other Europeans would try to gain influence there, and eventually, through war and bloodshed, the island was colonized by France on August 6, 1896. But of course, all Africans fought back against colonization, and on June 26, 1960, Madagascar established its independence. Alrighty, my friends, that's the end of the video. Any future video about Madagascar will likely focus more on art and culture, since that's more my thing. Today's video was a special episode, and I hope you enjoyed sharing this educational journey with me. Thank you for watching.